Hey guys, welcome back to more AFK Arena. So we have the new Awakened Celestial and Awakened Hypergen in the game, Gavis and Eugene. We're going to take a look at both of them, look at their animations, all that stuff, go through their skills with multipliers. We had a sneak peek at the skills with AFK inside. Now we get to see them with multipliers. We're going to go through it pretty quick, and then we'll see their animations in action. First of all, we'll start off with Gavis. That is the 2D art. Looks pretty sick, I'm not going to lie. So let's get into his ultimate. Once again, massive skill descriptions as always. So, got the three rules. No doubt damage can be dealt during his entrance into the battlefield. Enemy heroes cannot harm him unprovoked. And the, the deaths of enemy heroes must follow a certain order. Whenever his rules are violated, he gains 50 energy. Each rule can be triggered up to one time per second. So he can gain up to 150 energy, extra energy per second. How often that happens, we'll have to wait and see. And it's during his entrance that leaves. So I, And the other one's tied to death. So it's more the fact of him getting attacked, which becomes more of like a 50 energy per second uh, bonus. Uh, it, it, but you get like other spikes um, when enemies die. So I, I guess that's, that's pretty much what we're looking at. More of a 50 energy per second regain. Uh, active. He invokes order punishment, dealing three hits of damage equal to 250% of his attack rating to the enemy with the highest cumulative damage. When fighting with Eugene, the awakened hypergen dude, uh, he deals three hits of additional damage, additional AOE damage for 200% of Eugene's attack rating. It is a pretty big additional damage, uh, but it's not like it doesn't mean you have to. I don't think use them together. Uh, the scales of balance sense the battlefield, uh, the battlefield's order every three seconds, and Gavis's normal attacks change based on the cumulative damage dealt by both sides. If allies deal higher damage, Azure Bead uh, lights up. Otherwise, the uh, or Ocha Bead lights up. So when enemies have dealt more damage, normal attacks heal the weakest ally for 160% of attack rating. Nothing too crazy. Uh, and then when he, when your team's dealt more damage, normal attacks deal damage to the enemy hero with the highest cumulative damage for 160% of his attack rating. Cool beans. Now for skill ops. Uh, that bead, which is the enemy deal dealt more damage bead, increases the defense rating of the weakest ally hero by 35%. For three seconds, the offensive one reduces the defense of the enemy with the highest cumulative damage by 35% for 30 seconds. Then we get the defensive one recovers the 20% of lost health to the weakest allied hero. Not too bad. And then the offensive one deals additional damage to the enemy hero with the highest cumulative damage equal to 20% of his max health and cannot exceed 300% of his attack rating. There you go. That's the ultimate do. That was a read. I know we've gone through them before, but we're checking out multipliers. So in this one, at the start of battle, he slowly descends from above uh, and cannot be targeted. Damage dealt by enemies and allies is reduced by 90%. That's not too bad. So, I mean, it's like it's like pure setup time, like prime time setup time. All right. During Gavis's entrance, when an allied hero takes damage, Gavis, and this is his signature item, gains 50 energy up to 60. So he's going to come in a straight ult. Like, that's a good bonus ult. But you got to also consider the fact that they're also breaking his rule by dealing damage. So that was the rule, wasn't it? Or is that... Is that the 50 energy he's getting from this? Is that like... Is that, that, is that two things in one? I, we'll have to see. I don't know. Anyway, it's a lot of energy. After Gavis enters... Uh, the energy recovery of the enemy hero with the highest cumulative damage is reduced by 70% for 10 seconds. That's actually quite decent. Uh, after he enters, if an allied hero's health is uh, lower than their counterpart, uh, character opposite them, I understand that, they gain a shield equal to the difference in health, no lower than 350% of Gavis' attack rating, and no higher than 600% of his attack rating. If there is no enemy counterpart or the counterpart dies during Gavis' entrance, the allied hero will get one a shield worth 350%. Okay, cool beans. After Gavis enters, he imposes his punishment on the enemy hero with the highest cumulative damage, causing them to lose health in three stages. Each, each stage of health loss 
equal to 70% of the damage the enemy has dealt during Gavis's entrance can be no lower than 300% of Gavis's attack, but no higher than 500. So it's got the 500 cap. If there was no upper cap, it would be huge, but hey, it's a cap. Uh, when, an allied, when an allied hero takes damage from the enemy hero other than the one directly opposite them, the damage is reduced by 15%. Okay, I was hoping it would be more than 15%, but hey, it is what it is. Uh, and then we got the furniture. Increases the damage reduction by 30%. Okay, it goes up to 45. When allies... Uh, when allied heroes take damage from an enemy hero other than the one directly opposite them... Uh, wait, when... Wait, 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 restart that. When... Uh, wait, increases the damage reduction by 30% when allied heroes take damage from an enemy hero other than the one, the one directly opposite them and grants the allied hero 20 energy each time they take damage. This effect can be triggered up to two times every one second. Sorry for butchering that, but it's extra energy regeneration when hit by enemies besides the one opposite them. That's the way I understand that. When an allied hero takes damage from an enemy hero other than the uh, one directly opposite them, it triggers Gavis's punishment, dealing additional health loss equal to 150% of Gavis's attack rating. Uh, each allied hero can trigger Gavis's punishment up to one time every two seconds. So it's not too frequent on that one. All right, final ability. After Gavis enters, he determines the order based on the enemy's cumulative damage with the highest hero ranked as first. The first enemy hero shares 15% of damage taken by all, uh, all allied heroes. Okay, from by all the allied heroes. Okay, and that doesn't sound capped. Okay, interesting. Damage shared by the first enemy hero is increased by 30% and received healing reduced by 30 points. Uh, damage taken by the first enemy is increased by 50%. So you, you basically, by the time he enters, you're going to be nuking something super hard. Now let's jump to the, the awakening passive. When Gavis's rules are first violated, he gains 15 magic pierce points. When the first uh, enemy dies, all allied heroes immediately recover 40% max health. Additionally, Gavis recovers 15, 500 energy. I don't think this is the most broken thing, but you guys let me know if I'm wrong on that. I still don't think that's like the most broken awakening passive. It doesn't seem necessary, but let's go into the arena trials and check him out. Here we go. Basic animations. Let's slow it down. So there's his slow entry and you can see him gaining that 50 energy when allies are hit. Dude, very subtle uh, basic attack animations, isn't it? Okay, I want to see them together now. The trials better give them together. But that's a basic look. Alright. Honestly, like, nothing, nothing too, too crazy in that. Let's jump up here. Oh, Eugene's not in here. I want to see the alts with the extra hits. All right, so let's just see. Um, let's just do that. Let's just do Walker. And let's do Floppy. I want to just start with this and see if he makes a massive impact. Wait, let's just go four times speed. Let's see what he does. Okay, we die. Nice. All right. I always like to test the OP. The, <laughs> I always said it. How OP things are with that. All right, let's do that and that. I thought he'd get more energy than that. Feels feels really slow on energy recovery. I really I really thought his energy recovery would feel faster than that. But I guess I was wrong. All right, now let's just do it like this. Uh, we'll put you in there. Put you in there. Actually, let's put you in there. I don't really want to put you, you. Let's put you and you. All right, let's just let's just let him deal the damage. Let's see how it goes. Yeah, dude, dude feels really slow for energy recovery. We're obviously not ulting because of his ears, but... Mm. I don't know. I really don't know. Let me know what you guys think. What's your guys' thoughts? Uh, uh, I don't know. I, I'm very torn on this one. I'm very torn. Not too sure. All right, let's jump into the next one. Let's jump into Eugene. Eugene looks cooler in my opinion. I, I, I don't know. Something about his vibe is really sick. 
Dude sits floating. But honestly, this this in-game sprite looks wicked. I love this in-game sprite. Like even the cube, the detail on that cube is nuts. All right, let's get into him. Uh, passive, Eugene, Eugene's energy limit is adjusted to 2,000. Casting an ultimate will consume 1,000. Okay, so he's got like double double energy cap. While the cooldown time of, with a tool, cooldown time of eight seconds. When he uses it, Eugene deals 560% damage to all enemies. When fighting alongside Gavis, if Gavis is alive, he deals an additional three hits, uh, so he gets an extra 600% multiplier uh, of Gavis's of Gavis's attack rating to the target with the highest damage. Okay, but it's a 600 multiplier on that one, but it's single target, and he's got a 560 AOE. Okay. Uh, when casting an ultimate, magic cores on the battlefield will detonate and inflict infernal surge. Uh, each de each detonated magic core increases the ultimate power by 50% uh, attack rating up to 200% max. Okay, so you will get pretty chunky ults with this guy. Each detonated uh, magic core permanently increases Eugene's magic pierce by six points up to eight times. Okay, so he's going to... I feel like he's going to be the... He's going to have a... Ma like, I feel like he's going to be the damage. Eugene deals damage for 360% of his attack rating to targets and creates a lesser magic core around them. I, I got to see the range on this thing. Continuously reducing the magic resist of surrounding enemies by 25. So he's getting the magic pierce, getting the resist down. He's going to hit hard, I feel. This effect cannot stack. Uh, a projectile created by the skill Arcane Sting will detonate any surrounding magic cores, dealing damage for 280% of Eugene's attack rating to enemies around the magic cores. Up to five lesser magic cores can exist on the battlefield. Additional cores will be will detonate and disappear. So we got up to five. Five is a reasonable amount. I was thinking it was going to be two or three, but five is pretty solid. All right, let's move to this which is the signature item. When the projectile created by Arcane Sting detonates one magic core, it triggers a chain reaction that detonates other magic cores in range. Uh, then we get to... B -b 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 10 signature item. Uh, a lesser magic core will evolve into a, a, a magic core 1.5 seconds after its creation. Okay, that's pretty quick. Increasing its detonation power to 350% of Eugene's attack rating. After detonation, it will revert back. Okay, this, this sounds pretty decent. Eugene gains 120 20 energy uh, when a lesser magic core or magic core detonates and that doesn't have a cooldown like like a, a, an internal limit when using a skill eugene deals additional damage to one enemy units and creates one lesser magic core okay i feel like these cores are going to get pretty nutty i feel like just reading this and because i haven't put him in the or in their trials yet i feel like he's going to have crazy damage but i could be wrong Passive. When taking fatal damage, Eugene consumes energy to negate this damage. Every 10 energy can defend against damage for 60% of Eugene's attack rating. Okay, it's, it's, I, feel, I feel like he still gets one shot in, in, uh, in campaign at high deficits. This effect can be triggered once every 2.5 seconds. When Eugene's ultimate cooldown is reset, but his energy is insufficient to cast it, Eugene will consume his own health instead. Every 0.5% health can be converted into 10 energy. Okay, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. So if we go... Honestly, that's actually pretty reasonable. So half his health for a full, full ult, if my math is correct on that. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's late tired had my son's birthday today <laughs> i just ready for sleep uh active eugene creates a projectile dealing damage for 300 percent of his attack rating to the target and detonating any surrounding magic cores cool beans at the start of battle eugene regains 500 energy happy days uh and obviously at the start of battle his cooldown's ready so he's just going to sacrifice some health at the start of battle to get that ult off is the way I understand it. If Eugene successfully negates damage by consuming energy, he becomes immune to damage and control effects for the next 1.5 seconds. Okay, 1.5 is kind of what I was expecting for that. Uh, Eugene swaps the health of the allied hero with the lowest remaining health and the enemy hero with the highest remaining health. Uh, health exchange cannot exceed 850% of Eugene's attack rating. Eugene also deals damage for 450% of his attack rating to the enemy target with the lowest health. Cool beans. Upon using this skill, and this is the engraving, energy of the allied hero with the lowest energy remaining and energy of the enemy hero with the highest energy remaining will be exchanged with at least 400 energy swapped. Cool. 400. That's not too bad. 
When Eugene takes fatal damage that cannot be negated by Arcane Sting's passive effect, he becomes immune to this damage. He then targets himself, triggering this skill effect uh, and exchanging energy and health. This effect can be triggered at one time per battle. Okay, so that's that's honestly pretty good. I like that. And then we have his awakening passive. When an allied hero uh, accumulates 50 energy reduction from uh, enemy heroes. So like, yeah, thinking Odin and stuff is the easiest one that comes to mind for Elders too. Uh, when an allied hero accumulates energy reduction from an enemy hero... Wait, dude, I'm so tired. When an allied hero accumulates 50 energy reduction from an enemy hero, they restore 7.5% of max health. When 5% of their max health is lost, they recover 75 energy. Now, this sounds pretty crazy if you ask me, because it doesn't sound like there's a cap on that. So every 5% health an ally loses, they're gaining 75 energy. That is pretty cracked in my opinion. Let me know if I'm wrong on that take, but that this guy definitely sounds like the winner. This guy definitely sounds like the winner in both damage and utility. Wait, did... Okay, so there's his first ult. Now what? I don't know why it took him so long to get the ult off, because he should use it instantly, unless it has like a little cooldown at the start of battle. Let's, let's start that again. I was too busy pressing it. So let's go here. Now he uses some basics first. So his, his ultimate must have a little cooldown because I don't see why he wouldn't just use his uh, HP to use the ult instantly at the start of battle, but still pretty early. So there's the magic cores. Boom. There's a little magic core. I don't think you see them grow up into bigger magic cores. Oh, wait, he might not have that. He doesn't have that in this. Okay, so in this one, we'll see them uh, glow up into big magic cores. Uh, let's just go with you. And Mishka. Uh, let's try this. I just want to see if we can see these magic cores. Yeah, there's one down the bottom here. There you go. It, goes, it gets big really quick. And dude, yeah, this guy's damage is going to be insane. Yeah, this dude's definitely the winner in my mind. Every eight seconds, just nuke that ult. I mean, it is a bit of a downfall that he can't ult quicker, but I, I, ju I just feel like he's going to be the winner out of the two. I could be completely wrong, so don't quote, don't, don't be like, Vulcan said he's the better one. I'm going to go all in on him. Wait for testing, but that is just my gut feeling off of looking at them. I think Eugene looks better, and I think his kit's cooler. Uh, and hypergenes is just always cooler anyway. So that is my vibe. Let me know what you guys are thinking. As always, thanks for watching. I hope you have an awesome day, and I look forward to seeing the next one. Cheers.